then? Yeah. You ready? Go. Hi everyone, I'm Zorana Dragasevich. This is Hadia Zahir, Valeria Zaragoza, Joshua Zhang, and Scott Zhang, and we are Express Nails. So just to give you a quick overview, we're gonna be answering these questions today. We're gonna tell you what we are, how we plan to operate, what we believe is special about our system, what the industry is like today, and how we prove to be profitable in the future. So just for starters, this is Sharon. Her average day consists of taking after, looking after herself, her children, her own career, her home, but so often she neglects her own self-care in the midst of her busyness. We at Express Nails believe that no matter how little time you have, everyone deserves self-care, which is why we aim to provide quality service without sacrificing time. We intend to expedite the process of self-care manicures by solely providing these four services at the following prices. Um, our setup will follow the hours of operation of TJ Maxx. We intend to occupy 300 square feet of the second floor on Newberry Street location. We will have three nail stations set up. We will hire five nail technicians that will alternate shifts to follow legal work hours. Um, we will also have one manager that works most of the time to oversee operations. Later on, we will explain financials that we believe back up this setup, but I will now I'm gonna hand it off to Hadi, who's gonna talk about our value proposition. There are several reasons why consumers would benefit through Express Nails. Firstly, people want to get their nails done, as 64% of people showed interest in our full trip survey, and Express Nails addresses this need. Secondly, the most important factor that was voted among people who get their nails done was convenience, highlighting the fact that what distinguishes nail salons from one another is the level of convenience they offer their consumers. Express Nails understands this importance, and because of this, believes that it would be appealing for their customers to shop and get their nails done at one place, one time at TJ Maxx. Lastly, Express Nails wants to allow even the busiest of people to fulfill all their needs within their limited time. And because of this, would only have their services last between 30 to 45 minutes. This would be appealing to customers as normally 64% of people spend 30 minutes to an hour in a salon. So services that last less than an hour are favorable among the public. In addition, TJ Maxx would also benefit. This is because Express Nails would help TJ Maxx become more of a routine destination, meaning that <coughs> customers would visit more regularly instead of when they're in search of a specific product. Through our Qualtrics, we determined that 47% of people only visit TJ Maxx a few times a year. With the help of Express Nails, TJ Maxx can help target these people and have them return more regularly, which in which turn would strengthen their customer loyalty and strengthen their message of convenience. Next is Josh, who's gonna talk more about our target. According to data from our survey, we have gathered that approximately 22% of women TJ Maxx customers will become regular customers at Express Nails. And we've also further gathered that around, we will have around 50,000 regular customers a year. Of course, at the startup, this is rather um, unprobable. However, uh, as, we, as time passes, we will have more customers because more people will care about our services. Uh, as for our tar target demographic, we have decided to target a large uh, range of age demographics because, as you can see from the chart, women across all age groups are all interested in getting, getting their nails done. Uh, we also have uh, services for men's, however, we will focus on women's. Uh, this chart is from 2014, and it demonstrates spending on nail salon services from 2009 to 2014 in the US in terms of billions of US dollars. Uh, using the growth rate formula, which is uh, present value minus past value over the past value, we have gathered that over these past five, uh, over these five years, from 2009 to 2014, there's been a growth rate of around 42%. Now assuming that this growth rate has stayed the same, it is actually uh, pro um, possible that today, the spending in this industry is up to <coughs> $7 billion US dollars. And now I'll hand it off to uh, Valeria to talk about financials. For our projections, we estimate revenue by from our product sales and from our ser services, of which we took a percentage of to estimate total revenue. Our expenses incurred include rent, salaries, interest, and loan expenses. And in our first year in operation, we estimate uh, $3,000 of setup and installation costs, with 1110 coming from uh, equipment and 1,890 coming from advertising and utilities. And then furthermore, by analyzing our quality survey, 
We believe that in our third year of operation, we're going to have an average of 68 customers per day, which we took um, from the survey of 22% of the 236 people surveyed that said that they frequented getting their nails done. And from that, we believe that we will be able to grow and profit from our And now continuing the presentation with Josh. Uh, so through our research, uh, we found that uh, uh, within zero point mile, there are 13 uh, nail salons around TJ Maxx. Along the Newbury Street, there are nine nail salons. Two of them require appointment, and uh, six of them are under the uh, chain nail salon like uh, Tong Nail Skin uh, and the Mini Lung. So uh, among all these competitors, we select the top three competitors based on price, discount, and customer review. Uh, our plan to set, our, our price will be, uh, since our target customer is middle income female, uh, our price will be lower than high-end nail salon like uh, Mini Lux back pay, uh, but higher than, than relative low-end nail salon like uh, Tom Nail uh, and Skin. Uh, to recap what we're saying, TJ, uh, Ex Express nails uh, aim to aim to serve people uh, to satisfy people both convenient and and quality of service. So uh, we will offer four type of simple uh, service, mm. and and based on our uh, industrial dynamic, uh, it now is a good time, uh, optimal time to open our store. Uh, we believe that uh, by serving our customer qualitative service as best po possible price, we'll be able to uh, win, build up customer loyalty and win the market. And Thank lastly, you. just to reiterate, we believe that a big um, competitive advantage we might have is generating two types of revenue. We're going to have service revenue from the services we provide, and we also intend to sell products similar to nail care tools um, that would serve as a product sales revenue. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Can we go back to page 11, please, on the financials? Um, the 189,000 in revenues, uh, well, let me step back. What's beginning balance mean? The beginning balance is from our loans and then from our founders' equity and from our uh, family and friends that they invested in us. Okay, and then um, is that like a cash balance? Yes, it's yeah. like the cash being has to have in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that, that's kind of confusing on okay. this page. This should be like the income statement. Okay. okay. I would take that out okay. since it's hard to explain unless you actually see a cash flow statement and you know what those numbers uh, mean. Okay. Uh, looking at the revenue line, what's in the first year? In the first year, it's um, our estimated values from the Qualtrics survey that we took of the percentage of frequency of people that, um, that said that they would get their nails done between one to three times and one to, and two to three times per month. So what's the big difference between year one and two? In year one, I think that we just underestimated intentionally um, the number of customers we have, we would have. So using our survey, we estimated we would have about 140 customers a day once we um, gain traction, which is what we understand would come after our break even point in year three. So our year one, we took a fraction of that percentage. Okay, maybe a different way of saying it is, so you're all going to um, become certified nail salon people? Yes, and that's an additional expense we would have to incur. Right, and is that included in your expense? No, but it will be. Okay, so I would assume that 
someone or all of you, well, all of you should be working there in the nail salon, so you don't have to hire employees. To do that, you might have to go to some uh, beauty school or something like that. Uh, you should find out to find out how long that would take, how long that would take, what it costs. And so in year one, you might want to say that, well, we're going to be out of pocket for the first four months because we're going to be going to uh, school and we're going to be building out our space during that time period. So we're only going to be taking in revenues for the, let's say, the last nine months of the year. That would account for the smaller number. Um, but anyway, it seems like a really big leap from year one to year two. Um, okay. Um, and how are you going to pay your rent? Um, so we did the math in terms of the square footage, um, which is 337 yeah. per square foot that TJ Maxx has in sales. So we estimated that we want around 300 square feet based on the fact that we want to set up three nail stations. Yeah. And so we just did, um, we multiplied that and our rent is around 8,000 a month as of now. Okay, so you're, you're gonna pay the full rent on day one uh, based on what they're generating in sales. That correct? Yes. Okay. You, you, going back to the conversation we had yesterday, you might want to come up with a different formula. That's a pretty heavy burden right off the bat. And I think <coughs> that if you went into TGX and you made a pitch and they said, wow, that really would be value add for our stores and that it would be a good experience for our customers, I, I don't think on day one they would expect you to be paying full rent to cover all of the sales per square foot. The other way you can do it is the way lots of malls do it, where you have a lower base rent that you have to pay, and then you give the mall owner, in this case it would be TJX, a percentage of all of your revenues, which is known as percentage rent. So, um, uh, that way you're motivated to come to work every day because you've got to write a check for the rent, uh, the base rent, uh, and then you're, you're motivated to get people to come in every day because you, know, you, you want to make money and uh, you want to cover that, that rent through your, through your sales. So it works out for both parties. And ideally, from TGX's point of view, you're going to exceed the 330 um, per square foot number that you quoted, uh, that they're going to make out better at the end of the day as opposed to just paying the flat rent. So you want to you want to motivate everyone. You want to motivate yourselves, but you also want to motivate TJX in that you're going to make more uh, over time uh, in this formula because we're going to be successful. Okay, we can talk about that more offline. Then uh, real quickly. Um, the what, how many people are you going to service every day? Uh, we estimated it to 68 people per day. 68 people a day. And um, are you expecting it to be steady state all day long? No, so we're just basing that off of the TJ Maxx, um, like peak points of the day. So for example, on weekdays, it's usually from five to seven. So at that time we were planning to have perhaps three nail technicians working rather than one or two in the morning because it's a lot right, less people coming right. in the morning. And on weekends, in general, three nail technicians at all times. Okay, so uh, they, you, you might want to think about, just make sure that with that number of people coming through in one day, uh, how many would you have to be doing on a you know, per hour basis, and are you going to have enough employees to cover all those? Okay, thank you very much.